Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how we completely transformed this small house that needed everything. This home went sale pending after just a week of being on the market. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you all the numbers. As usual, let's start from the front yard. There was not much curb appeal before because the lawn was dead and the plants were not doing so hot either. We put in new plants, mulch, and added rocks to give it some design element. Now the front yard is completely drought resistant but very welcoming. There were huge cracks on the driveway before so we had to repave it which was expensive but very necessary. We also remove the ugly carport and replace the garage door that didn't even close. On the main house, we replace the roof and gutters and all the single pane windows with double pane windows. In the front, there were traditional railings on the side and we replaced it with new horizontal handrails. Of course, we also gave this home a fresh coat of paint and the house now looks very cute and well kept. Welcome to this adorable new home. In the living room, the first thing that catches your eye is probably the fireplace that's in the corner. It has a lot of old world charm, so when we were remodeling the house, I decided to keep it but paint the bricks to the slate gray color to update it. And as usual, we installed a lot of recess lights and replaced the baseboards and trim so it feels very updated. And on the floors, there were distracting and dramatic blue carpet before. So that was pulled out and we refinished the hardwood floors. There was also floor radiator here that was so outdated and we replaced it with central heating which was expensive but another necessary purchase. Over here right next to the living room, you probably noticed that the wall that was here was removed. We also switched the dining room with the kitchen. The old kitchen was on this side with the wall being there, it was very enclosed. And another challenge we had was this doorway to the garage that's bulging out. So it was very difficult to make the kitchen layout functional. So we decided to switch it over to that side and the kitchen is a lot bigger than before. The dining room being here with the wall removed doesn't feel very cramped either. So the kitchen, despite our best effort, is still on the smaller side. So we kept it all white and we use the very small pieced herringbone pattern tiles to decorate the backsplash. It was a lot of effort to install, but it elevates the style of this otherwise simple kitchen. From here, let's check out the garage briefly. Usually we don't have to do a lot of work in the garage because we just have to clean it up. But here we had to do quite a bit of work because for example, the steps going into the garage was not up to cold, so we had to redo it. And the slab was completely shot and we had to repave it along with the driveway. We also removed all the shelves on the side and finished it up with new drywall. So now this is a very clean space and ready for the new owners to use it however they want. Before I show you more of this freshly remodeled small little house, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel so that you can see more interesting before and after videos like this. I wrote a book called mm -hmm. Flipping Houses Quick Start Guide. It's a comprehensive guide for house flipping beginners. So pick up your copy on Amazon today if you're interested. This house is narrow and long, so all the bedrooms and bathrooms are towards the back. So this first bedroom had wood panels all over and it felt very dark before. We replaced the ceiling light retextured the walls and repainted the walls and also peeled off the ugly carpet and refinished the hardwood floors. 
So there was a window and a door going to the backyard right here. But there's another door leading to the backyard right next to it from the hallway. So we decided to remove this one and make this a larger window instead. The second bedroom was a little bit tricky. The door was already here, but on that side over there, there was steps going to another door that leads to the hallway in the back. We decided to remove the steps and the doorway because a secondary access was completely unnecessary. Other than that, the renovation was very standard here. We put in new light, new window, new closet door, new paint, and new flooring. This guest bathroom was very small and odd. You open the door and the toilet is right in front of you, right in the center. Other than that, the vanity was across this entire wall, but it was super shallow and it was difficult to access part of it because you have to try to avoid the toilet that's right there. So we decided to relocate the toilet to this side and shrink the vanity so that this becomes a more of a typical layout. We use new shower tiles that are huge and with marble patterns and this very simple light gray color floor tiles and also very modern floating vanity to completely refresh the space. The primary bedroom was all pink before, but I really like that it has so much space and there were actually two closets. So there's a standard wall closet on this side that's pretty wide. And there was also another closet that was right next to the primary bathroom right around here. It had some dead space before, so I knew that we could use this entire space to either enlarge the primary bathroom or um, enlarge the closet space. Originally, I wanted to expand the primary bathroom and still keep a secondary closet over here. But then I decided that a true luxury, spacious primary bathroom is more desirable. So we ended up giving the entire space to this bathroom. And you can see that we were able to fit in this dual vanity here and also a humongous shower right here. The space is truly luxurious and very functional and this totally make us stand out from the competition because it's very rare for a Bay Area home to have a large primary ensuite as nice as this one. Regarding the finishes, we use the same shower tiles and floor tiles as the guest bathroom. Um, the light color palette makes the space feel more expensive. And on this side, we put in this large floating vanity that also gives you an illusion that the space is very large because you get to see the floor underneath the vanity. Now let's move on to the backyard. There was an awning before right here that had very low ceiling and it was poorly constructed and damaged. So we had to remove it. The patio originally also was cracked and uneven, so we had to replace it with new concrete. The huge tree over here did a number to this retaining wall, so we had to do a lot of repairs and also stucco it to make it look nice. On the second level here, we cleaned it up and put pavers and rocks to form a nice walkway. On the sides, we put in fresh plants and mulch to make it look nice. On the third level up there, we removed the makeshift basketball hoop and the handrail. Also, the planter wall that was here. 
So the backyard feels a lot bigger than before and we use plants and grass and mulch to improve the landscaping and now this is a very family-friendly space. Now you've seen the highlights of the renovation, let's give it a quick walkthrough to check out every corner of the home. Compared to the dark and outdated before, the home is light and bright now. The kitchen is still on the smaller side, but there's way more storage and work surface, and the flow has improved a ton. Throughout the entire home, the cream wall color and natural floor finish are consistent and make the house feel a little bigger. It took me some time to figure out the guest bathroom layout, but it came out clean and practical. The primary bedroom is the best part as it's roomy with a luxurious ensuite. We made the best out of the space we had and I'm very happy to see how it turned out. We're going to discuss the number right after this, don't go anywhere. Now that you've toured the entire house, let's talk about the numbers. I purchased this house for 1.5 million and put in about 200,000 in the renovations because this house needed everything. The final sale price was a little disappointing. It was only $2 million, which was a lot lower than my expectations because the market is a little soft. The final profit was a lot lower than what I expected as well, but it was still in the six figures, so it wasn't that bad. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. See you next time. This small house that needed everything. Okay. And more functional. Sorry, I have to do it. And we had to had wood here was already here. This enhanced the look. To enhance what?